Hey guys, Bob here, that's Scottish Drummer. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I set everything up in Logic to record my drums. So let's just dive into it. Firstly, you can see I have all my tracks labeled and I have corresponding icons. I find the icons actually to be quicker than the text to find. So to change that, it's up in the top left here under track. So you click here to change the track name and you click here to change the icon. I like these flat ones. I think the 3D ones look pretty cheesy, but it's up to you. Another thing I like to do up here under mix and IO labels, um, as it sounds, you get to label all your IO. This is useful if you don't have things running in sequential order. For example, my first eight inputs are my Focusrite Claret, but then I'm also using the ADA inputs on my Sapphire. So I'm using the fifth one because I have Phantom Power running from five to eight. I'm gonna be adding some more microphones soon, so that'll be probably on ADAT one and two. So labeling them here is just really useful. So when you close this, you know, when you go to change your inputs over here, input, your input list actually shows you everything that you've labeled, which is really useful because sometimes I don't remember that input 15 is input five on the Sapphire. So you might have noticed my drums set up within this folder here. So you can tuck everything away, you can expand it and have everything laid out. This is really useful, say like a client sends me their whole session to record my drums in and send it back. This just keeps it really tidy. So, you know, they know where the drums are. And um, you can even have different folders for different takes. So like I could have a folder of a simple version of drums, a folder of a busier version so that they can see everything nice and clean and uh, it's all really simple. The more you can simplify things, the better it is. Within Logic, this is called a track stack. So what you do is you select all the tracks that you want to make a stack, go up to track. Mine's is grayed out, so I'll flatten it right now. Uh, so let's do this again. Create track stack. And there's folder stack or summon. I use summon because it also creates a drum bus, right? And if we bring up the mixer, you can see the drum bus over here. This allows you to do anything, say EQ and compression on your whole drum mix rather than individual channels. You can see I am running them on individual channels here. But you know, the more you can reduce the workload on your computer, if you have the same reverb on every channel, you can just put that one reverb on the bus and it'll do the same job. So it's really cool, it gives you more control and it can help reduce the workload on your computer. To talk about grouping, this is for like multi-edit. In my previous video about using drum takes, I've got that session opened up here. If you switch between takes, there was no way to change all of your drum takes. If you highlighted them all and changed it to two, I would expect them all to go to two, but that didn't work, right? You can clearly see that there. But if we put them in a group, you toggle that by doing Shift G. If you then make one change, it changes all of them. That's exactly what we want, right? So I'll bring up the mixer again here. This is your group here. So I've named mine drums. So to do that, you just highlight all the tracks that you want. And then you click on group. You can create a new one. I've already got mine under drums. Simple as that. Like I said, it's shift to G, toggles it on and off. And once you have groups enabled, it comes up in the top left as an option. So open up the sentence for that. And if you turn on editing, that's what enables you to jump between takes. So I'm finding this really useful. This is something I only recently found out about. So this is what I have set up. I've got editing on, quantize locked, I'm not fussed about that. Volume, you wanna control them individually, right? I wanna mute tracks individually, solo individually. I wanna record enable, and I wanna input monitor all of them. Because when I'm recording my drums, I'm recording the whole kit. So that means if you toggle on for one track, all of them come on. So it's really cool. So let's try that now, input monitor off for all of them and on for all of them. Record enable on and off. So this is really cool, especially for the takes feature. The last thing I wanted to talk about was channel strip settings. So if you're new to recording and mixing, well done getting this far, because I know how daunting it can be to even make a start. So that's great that you're willing to learn and progress. 
if you are new to mixing, let's bring up the mixer here. One of the biggest benefits of these channel strip settings is the default. So I've got my drum bus here, and if you click on setting, down the bottom here, you can see all the presets. So we've got hi-hat, kick, overhead, snare, under drums, right? Or even a whole stereo kit. So if you apply this, let's say a natural kit, look what it drops, everything onto your uh, plugins. Like it's got a compression on here, an envelope and channel EQ. These two are off. I assume they should be on. So, you know, it gives you a great starting point. So you can just throw these on, hear what they sound like, play around with them a little bit. It's really cool. So you'll notice this was on the drum bus. If we do this on like an actual channel, those options aren't there and I'm not sure why. So these are these are just my presets that I've that I've saved myself. So the workaround I've got for that, say um, we want a kick. Modern kick. Okay, again, it's on the it's only on the drum bus. But what you can do is just copy that. Copy channel strip setting. And then go over to your kick. Oops, right click. And paste channel strip setting. Boom. Everything's copied over. So that's a workaround, you know, you can load up each one individually. But then you can actually save them. So you can do this and save channel strip setting as. And you know, here you go. And now it's going to be saved under your track settings. So you can save it as modern kick, save. And then on any other track, modern kicks now there. So you just got to do that once, copy them over. I don't really know why it's like that, but it is. So that's my workaround. And that is it for channel strip settings. So that's what I'm using at the moment to record my drums. I hope this has helped you guys, especially the people who are just starting out. If you've got any tips, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll pin the best ones to the top so that everybody can see them. I'm working on updating my website right now. And once that's live, I'm gonna have everything that I've shown here in this video available for download as a template. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And I'll leave a link in the description once that's live. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.